the weather forecast with Akendogaz. Hi, beautiful people, and good to have you again on the weather forecast. I hope you're having an amazing time. This evening, we may experience a calm weather in most parts of the nation, with a possibility of moderate precipitation in some parts of the northwest and the south regions. We may have as low as 18 degrees in the west region, the center at Damawa and east between 21 to 22 degrees, and the littoral southwest and the north regions would expect as low as between 24 to 25 degrees. Daily in the northwest this evening, there may be light precipitation except for Wum and Fundong, and by morning, there may be light showers in the towns of Mbengui and Bamenda. On to the far north region this evening, there may be no chance of precipitation in the entire region, and same experience by morning, but with a fully clouded sky in Yagua. Lastly, we go over to the south, where this evening, there may be moderate precipitation in the entire region, and this experience will progress till morning in the entire south region. To protect yourself and others against the coronavirus, keep a one meter distance with everyone, avoid greeting by handshakes, any case of symptoms, call the number 1510. Have a good time. Government cautions against the non-respect of barrier measures to stop the coronavirus spread. Prime Minister Joseph John Duto insists on a continuous mobilization for collective safety. The 73rd World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day is commemorated to pay tribute to actions for humanity. The Cameroon Red Cross acts to boost the COVID-19 fight in the Central Hospital of Yaoundé. Achieving a down curve in maternal and neonatal mortality is government's resolve as actions are taken to preempt transmissions of diseases and to provide quality health services across the country. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We begin our half hour newscast with government's resolve to bar the way to the contagious coronavirus. During a video conference presided over by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute today, a strong call for a collective and continuous mobilization against the pandemic was made. This comes one week after measures to ease barrier restrictions were announced. Sisa Kotamko has the details from the Star Building. 2,256 reported cases with 86 deaths are alarming figures for anyone to suggest that they can downplay the gravity of the coronavirus pandemic even after the suppression of some restrictive measures by the authorities. The Interministerial Tax Force in Thursday video conference were instructed by Prime Minister John Guter to remain mobilized and committed to the fight against the disease and to ensure that the population continues to observe barrier gestures, in particular the the systematic wearing of protective masks and respect social distancing in all areas open to the public. The Minister of Decentralization and Local Development is in this respect giving pass to municipal councillors to issue others or decisions sanctioning the failure to wear masks within their territorial jurisdiction. In the same manner, the Delegate General of National Security and the Secretary of State in charge of the Gendarmerie are to strengthen controls aim at the avoiding overloading in public transport. Administrative authorities are to specifically ensure compliance with the regulations regarding the opening and closing of hotspots. To intensify awareness among the population, to encourage them to adopt responsible attitudes, particularly in commercial areas and public places, the Minister of Communication will make use of available platforms. As the frontliners grabs with the determination to lower the curve, Public Health Minister in conjunction with governors of the regions were instructed to intensify actions aimed at optimizing the care of infected persons, the containment of persons at risk, and the active search for suspicious cases within the community. Scientific Research Minister is to finalize in the nearest future steps taken for local production of all protective gears and medicines. 
On his part, Finance Minister is to speed up the effective and full implementation of the economic support measures for enterprises decided by the head of state, while External Relations Minister continues negotiations started with the French side regarding support for the fight against COVID-19. The treatment of COVID-19 cases in the littoral region is a huge task that calls for decentralized efforts from both the medical corps and the public. To strengthen this collaboration, the Secretary of State in the Ministry of Public Health, Ali Mayatu, has been assessing efforts made in the economic capital. Mercy Ashu Nyabeo Trail, the official, and his delegation, Shina reports. It was certainly not a smooth ride for the Secretary of State, Ali Mayatu, and his team of experts who came meandering through the streets of Douala to see for themselves the realities of dealing with COVID-19 in the littoral region. We came to verify if the instructions prescribed to check the virus are respected in health structures and laboratories. At the Gainako Obstetric and Pediatric Hospital, charged with severe cases, and the Lackintony Hospital, the public health scribe was briefed by the medical staff on the number of persons streaming in to be tested, infected, dead or treated of the virus. I was lucky to be treated well. The impression I had before coming here was different. I was surprised by the quality of treatment given me, especially the reception. The Mbapelepe Stadium, low-cost housing structures in Yasa, and the call center at the Nilong District Hospital are proofs that decentralization efforts seem to be paying off with fewer cases recorded daily. In the southwest region, where measures taken to contain the coronavirus has been bearing fruits, the curve that is flattening has been held. The Secretary of State at the Ministry of Public Health in charge of the control of epidemics and pandemics, Ali Mayatu, is also at the specialized health facilities in Boya, the University of Boya Laboratory of Infectious Diseases, and the Limbe General Hospital to evaluate their work. Guy Roger Nana tells us more. The Secretary of State at the Ministry of Public Health in charge of the control of epidemics and pandemics, Halim Ayatu, made his first stop at the capital of the southwest region, Boya. The Secretary of State, accompanied by health experts from the Ministry of Public Health, visited the specialized health facilities for the management of the COVID-19 at the Boya Regional Hospital. The Laboratory for Emerging Infectious Diseases at the University of Boya, inaugurated in the year 2009 and currently standing as one of the best in the country, opened its doors to the high-profile guests. On his way to Limbe, the Cameroon Baptist Convention Health Services, located at the entrance of Mutengene, coming from the town of Boya, equally shared insights with the Secretary of State on its activities on the management of the COVID-19 in the southwest region. Limbe, the town of friendship, was the first to record a case of the COVID-19. Halim Ayatu stopped over at the Limbe Regional Hospital from where, alongside the director, Dr. Kinga Thompson, went to the Middle Farms Stadium, which has been set aside to host a specialized center for the management of the COVID-19 in the region. Including his visit, the Secretary of State also extended a word of congratulations to health authorities and administrative personnel involved in the fight against the COVID-19 in the southwest region and called on the population of the region to adopt responsible behaviors in the face of the health crisis plaguing the country. And now on to one of our top stories. Today is the World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day commemorated to pay tribute to volunteers for their contribution to better humanity. On the occasion, the Cameroon Red Cross has donated a consignment of medical and hygiene kits to the Central Hospital of Yaoundé. The gesture, according to the president of the Cameroon Red Cross, Cecilia Kamifumo, is intended to boost efforts in the crusade against COVID-19. Gilbert Ongene reports on the donation. A round of applause as a sign of recognition of the sacrifices put in by medical staff and the 66,000 volunteers across the country who are presently at war against the COVID-19. This is the Cameroon Red Cross's way of paying tribute to these people who are sparing no effort to save lives from the global health crisis. We are congratulating and encouraging those volunteers who are working tirelessly in Cameroon and across the globe. This permits us to talk about volunteers who are often forgotten. They are doing a great job. 
The protection and hygiene kits handed to medical staff of the Yaoundé Central Hospital are made up of disinfectants, liquid soap, protective gloves, stretchers, plastic bags, protection masks and cleaning materials. We are very happy and very proud of this donation because, uh, first of all, it is a recognition of the work done by medical personnel. The donation of these materials takes place on May 8, a day observed across the globe as World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day. It is a day the world's largest humanitarian organization is using this year to recognize and applaud the active role played by medical staff and volunteers in fighting the coronavirus pandemic. Apart from commemorating the 73rd edition of the Red Cross Society, the Cameroon Red Cross has been quite active in six regions of the country to check the spread of the coronavirus. Its volunteers have been sensitizing the population on what the virus is and how to prevent infections. Beatrice Lawsama reports that their actions also include providing care to coronavirus patients and donating hand washing facilities. The Red Cross, in the middle of the COVID-19 response picture, as early as 8 o'clock each morning, this team of volunteers makes washing cans available to commuters in strategic points of the city for those who want to keep their hand-washing regimens even as they transit to homes or workplaces. We receive on average 200 people. There are some people who are regular visitors to the place and wash their hands all the time here. A measure described as relevant, six steps are rare in major junctions of the town. Right now, I'm fetching water to replenish zones where water is scarce. And it has been a routine for two months now since the outbreak of the disease. Hundreds of such washing can points have been installed by the Red Cross in its efforts to slow down the spread of coronavirus. The generosity of donors has been critical in doing this, they say. The Cameroon Red Cross has reportedly worked closely with health authorities to provide care to patients and has been on the COVID-19 front in six regions of the country. They started with sensitization on the preventive measures of this COVID-2019. They proceeded by also providing kits like uh, buckets, water, soap, and they dispersed themselves in the quarters, in the markets, and in adjunctions. Responding during this public health crisis has been a team effort, and volunteers of the Red Cross say they have to brave challenges each day to achieve well-being, which is their priority. Checking the spread of COVID-19 in localities will soon be intensified in markets. In May, for Nafamba Division of the Centre Region, municipal authorities of the area have received material from the Ministry of Trade, which is concerned about the need for traders and customers to stay protected as they carry out commercial activities. Clarice Areitakan has the details. The consignment was made up of hand washing material, cartons of soap and other products needed to check the spread of the coronavirus. The initiative from the Ministry of Trade is aimed at aiding municipal authorities in their efforts to keep COVID-19 out of their localities. Each person who goes to the market has to wear the mask. The second measure is of course that uh, you have to wash the hands. The last one is uh, of course to respect the social distanciation. It was also the opportunity to stress the need to intensify activities which have as goal to ensure that restrictive measures enforced to keep the population safe are respected. We have been fighting this uh, coronavirus for quite some time now, with no means actually. So it has been useful to have to go straight to the market and see exactly what is happening there, correct what has been true to be corrected. While the gesture was appreciated, vigilance was nevertheless recommended and carefree attitudes towards COVID-19 firmly cautioned against. In yet another move, the Organization for the Control of Endemics in Central Africa has donated anti-COVID-19 equipment, including rapid test kits to control transborder traffic between Cameroon and the Central African Republic. This was in Garoua Bulai in the east region of Cameroon and Biloko in the Central African Republic. Tala LT reports that the organization's executive secretary, Dr. Manuel So Obiang Ada, led the exercise. 
The Organization for the Control of Endemics in Central Africa, OSEAC, believe arming border localities of the CEMAC zone with anti-COVID-19 kits will prevent trans-border spread of the disease. Our plan is to aid and reinforce actions carried out at the level of border health districts to fight against the coronavirus. The coronavirus. The donation of a tent, chairs, tables, solar kits, infrared thermometers, soap, sanitizers, and COVID-19 test kits to border health control post in Garabulai, authorities say, will add a new impetus to the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The gift from uh, SEAC is going to go a long way to galvanize the efforts which have already been uh, taken by the government. The increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the border town of Belo in the Central African Republic means Garabulai in Cameroon is at risk of further contamination. Reason why from Garabulai, the OSEAC delegation crossed over to Beloko in the company of the Central African Minister of Public Health, Dr. Pierre Somse, where they donated a similar consignment of anti-COVID-19 kits to control persons who intend entering into Cameroonian soil. And now on to President Paul Beer's special gift to the population. Those people of Miyumi Salah in Ja and Lobo Division of the South Region have also had their share of President Paul Beer's COVID-19 prevention material during the distribution exercise by the Senior Divisional Officer for Ja and Lobo, David Kulbut Aman. The inhabitants were enjoined to scrupulously respect all the barrier measures prescribed by governments to spread, to curb the spread of the deadly pandemic. Clarice Adze has the details. Mayoma Sala, the hometown of President Paul Bia, is now well armed to prevent the novel coronavirus from entering the subdivision, which to now has not recorded a case. Their own share of the buckets, hand sanitizers, face masks, cartons of soap, cooking oil, and bags of rice, gifts from the head of state, were handed over Thursday at the Mayoma Sala Council Hall by the senior divisional officer for the Jai and Lobot Division. The population here is so grateful towards the head of state. His Excellency Paul Bia, who asked us to come personally on the field to distribute uh, this uh, special gift from him. Handing the preventive kits to members of the local distribution committee made up of the DO, mayor, some traditional and religious authorities, and a representative of the indigenous Baka forest people of Mayomasala, the SDO challenged them to ensure that the materials are distributed to all the 101 villages of Mayomasala subdivision. The recipients have expressed gratitude to their own son and brother, promising to always stand by him. Similarly, the inhabitants of Waza have been enjoined to continue respecting social distancing and to ensure that the hygienic rules recommended by government to put the coronavirus at bay are respected. This was during the distribution of the head of state special gifts to the population by the divisional officer for Waza, Patrice Joel Nakiri. Sylvester Atemking tells us more. Gratitude and satisfaction summed the reception of President Paul Bia's special assistance on the fight against COVID-19. The divisional officer for Waza, while handing the materials to the beneficiaries, urged them to redouble sensitization campaign efforts while also hailing the head of state for the assistance. They should continue washing their hands, respect social distancing and the wearing of masks. They still think it is a disease for big towns, but they need to know that nobody is exempted. The beneficiaries on their part also express appreciation, stating that they will see to the effective use of the material. For this uh, corona, we see how the government are taking care of us. We are so great. We are happy to bless what they have offered to us as a gift. Coming on the heels of two confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Kusiri, next door to Waza, the mayor of Waza, Ibrahim I. Mohamed, also used the occasion to enjoin the people to step up the respect of government measures on the fight against COVID-19 because it is real. The littoral region, which is amongst the most hit by the coronavirus pandemic, has also benefited from the head of state's compassion. The senior divisional officer for Vuri, Benjamin Butu, has been coming the five subdivisions to distribute the special gifts and to urge the population to develop responsible and considerate attitudes during this period. Kikishi Lawrence has more from the littoral. 
The series of events to distribute such items as buckets, soap, hand sanitizers and face masks were organized at the office premises of the five subdivisions visited. The choice of beneficiaries went in keeping with the intentions of the donor, President Paul Bia, to get to the vulnerable groups in the subdivisions. I'm very grateful, you know, and the often very delicate. And so we are going to make good use of these items and, of course, uh, respect what our president has, has told us. The senior divisional officer, Benjamin Mbutu, did not focus on handing over the gifts. He took time at each subdivision to explain the need to continue respecting the preventive measures against COVID-19, despite the recent decision to lift some movement restrictions. The civil administrator told the beneficiaries that the gifts are quite symbolic, given that they will soon be finished, adding that what the head of state is giving is the beginning for them to continue taking care of themselves, while hoping that the gifts will not be treated as any other free and public property in our society, whereby tomorrow... It will not be surprising to find a public bucket for washing of hands standing in one corner of a home in some quarter. To support the head of state's resolve to keep Cameroonians safe from the ravaging pandemic, members of parliament from Upper Plateau Division in the West Region have been on the move. The sum of 4 million CFA friends and 5,000 face masks have been offered to the four councils of the division by Chief Senator Poker Max and two other elected representatives of the area. Ngo Henry Tesamber reports. The Upper Plateau Division has not registered any case of the coronavirus. The Senator and the two members of Parliament have continued to intensify the fight against the pandemic in the division. Chief Senator Poka Marks II, ruler of Baham, Honorable Theodon Datu, Vice President at the National Assembly, and Honorable Marie-Louise Ngoku donated some 5,000 face masks plus the sum of one million each to all the four councils of the Upper Plateau, representing the benefactors, Chief Senator Poka Marks II said it was in their solidarity move to roll back the COVID-19 in all the nine chiefdoms of the administrative unit. The mayors of the four councils, Baham, Bangu, Bati, and Bamenju, expressed profound gratitude and promised to use the gifts wisely. I want to thank our senator and all our parliamentary for this gift. I want to say that we are going to use it beautifully. Upper Plateau SD Yampen Usmanu has used the occasion to urge the population to respect all measures taken by the government to fight the coronavirus in the country, especially the wearing of face masks in public places. A great part of the population remain conscious of the need to keep safe from the coronavirus as health personnel continue to strive to save those who are infected. The good news today is that the number of those recovered from COVID-19 has increased by 11 in the country. Baldwin Sama is on standby at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center in Yaoundé. Hi Baldwin, tell us what's the latest. <laughs> Good evening to you, Esther Kiman. Welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center this Friday evening, where, as you rightly said, the good news from here today is that the number of confirmed cases of Camunians who have recovered from COVID-19 keeps increasing on a daily basis. And as of tonight, Friday, we have 11 new cases of Camunians uh, uh, who have recovered from COVID-19. And Esther, if we should add the number of Camunians uh, who have recovered this Friday to the number of Camunians who have recovered as of last night, Thursday, given that yesterday we had 1,221 confirmed cases of recoveries. When you add 11, it gives us 1,232 confirmed cases of recoveries from COVID-19 as of tonight in Cameroon. Today, equally, officials of the Ministry of Public Health have confirmed to us this evening that we had nine persons tested positive as far as COVID-19 in Cameroon is concerned this evening. And they say the 10 different regions of Cameroon are affected as far as the spread of the virus is concerned with three 
main regions concerned, or I should say three regions highly affected, it's talking about the spread of this virus. We have the center, the little world, and the west regions of the country with uh, the Ministry of Public Health that has deployed some medical personnel to most of these regions to check these different particular cases of uh, COVID-19 in some of these regions to try as much as possible to save as many lives as possible, given that this happens to be the main objective of the Ministry of uh, Public Health. We all know that yesterday the Ministry received uh, some of these test kits uh, to test particular cases as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned, made available thanks to the President of the Republic and officials of the Ministry confirmed to us a while ago that most of these kits have been partitioned already according to the different regions based on the priority of uh, for some of these regions and most of these kits will be uh, dispatched to most of these regions in the hours or in the days ahead. So the take-home message from officials of the Ministry of Public Health this Friday evening is that Cameroonians should continue respecting the different outline measures from the government of Cameroon to stop the spread of COVID-19, especially that which has to do with uh, the respect of uh, uh, social distancing, the wearing of a face mask each time they find themselves in any public place, or constant washing of hands using clean water. 11 new cases of recovery this Friday evening, taking the number to 1,232 confirmed cases of Cameroonians who have recovered from COVID-19. Back to you, Esther. To board in summer, and that is definitely an occasion to heal the efforts of the health personnel. Being COVID-19 positive is definitely not a fatality. Now, on to one of our other top stories. Government is committed to reduce the alarming numbers of maternal and neonatal deaths, which currently stand at 4,000 women and 22,000 newborns annually in Cameroon. During the commemoration of the African Day for the Reduction of Maternal and Neonatal Mortality, the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manawudu Malashi, prescribed better quality service and urged expectant mothers to respect antenatal rendezvous. Gerald Nanji Eyambe tells us more. The current level of pregnancy-related mortality in Cameroon is still 10 to 20 times higher than that of developed countries, despite the substantial decline of 40 percent. Neonatal mortality, unfortunately, has been stagnant for the past 15 years, despite efforts deployed. We must absolutely innovate strategies aimed at addressing the problem of the neighborhood in particular. Malaria, severe anemia, HIV AIDS related diseases, coupled with inadequate prenatal care, non assistance of childbirth by qualified staff, among others, are the causes of maternal and neonatal mortality. In order to prevent this, the government has put in place response mechanisms. Construction of referral hospitals for mother and child, gynaco, obstetric and pediatric hospitals, and improvement of the technical platforms of health facilities at the district health level. Such efforts cannot be made possible without the input of the caregivers. I would like to extend my warm congratulations to the health staff at all levels of the health pyramid who works tirelessly every day to ensure safe birth for our sisters and daughters. These efforts are geared towards achieving the sustainable development goal number three of ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all at all ages by 2030. There is good news for workers of enterprises under the Special Council Support Fund for Mutual Assistance. They will henceforth enjoy a salary increment of 2%. This is contained in a collective agreement reviewed and signed today at an event presided over by the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Gregoire Ouna. As Luma Slim Davis reports, it is a motivation to the workers and it will definitely promote local development of decentralized collectivities. The collective agreement signed by the concerned employers and employees' representatives is the outcome of the revision of the collective agreement of enterprises of the Special Council Support Fund for Mutual Assistance, better known as FECOM. The engagement of the general manager of FECOM after the signing of that uh, collective engagement is uh, 
to apply it because what I have to say is that the top management of the club is happy of the work made by the personnel. It is with that uh, personnel that uh, we are now among the first category of public, public, public enterprise. So we are uh, satisfied. In reviewing the collective agreement, the mixed commission took into consideration a 19 article project submitted by the employers for amendment, including salaries. We have new salaries. There are advantages for the employee. Transport is uh, 35,000 per month. Yes, for the around uh, natives, we have 45,000 per month. Like director, we have 100,000 per month. Collective agreements are subject to review every three years. And now on to these unfortunate incidents in the southwest region. Parts of the Limbe Court of First Instance have been ravaged by flames with three offices burnt. The material damage is huge and the workers say it will immensely affect the smooth progress of proceedings. Investigations are ongoing to establish the cause of the fire outbreak as we hear in this report by Guy Roger Nana. Thursday afternoon at the Limbe Court of First Instance, an ongoing court session at the Court Hall 1. Just at the entrance, we find debris of what looks like court registries that were saved from the ravaging flames earlier. Between 2 and 2.30 a.m., we received calls that the court hall, the court premises was on fire. We got in touch with the uh, fire brigade from Sonara, who fortunately for us, reacted promptly. The damage is extensive. However, the exact course is yet to be determined. We have lost most of our documents. Three offices which were totally destroyed. Two offices of magistrates and the office, the registry, we are still investigating. We cannot say at, as at now. Investigations are going on to find out where the fire came from. This sad incident has, however, not halted activities at the Limbe Court of First Instance. Activities as much as we can will continue. Will continue. We cannot have a city like Limbe where the court is not functional. Whatever it takes, we have to give justice to the people of Limbe. It is hoped that this incident will not put a hold to legal procedures here. In other news, the European Union has outlined a 15 billion euro package that is over 980 billion CV francs as part of a global response to all the spread of the coronavirus. The statement was made today in Yaoundé by the Union's ambassador to Cameroon. His Excellency Hans Peter Schadeg was speaking in an exclusive interview with CRTV ahead of Europe's Day tomorrow. Charles Ibonet puts the Europe's Day into context. The European Union space is one of the most vulnerable coronavirus environments with plus 500,000 people infected and plus 60,000 others dead. This is the worst crisis we have seen since at least the end of the uh, Second World War. And uh, it uh, coincides with today's uh, uh, Europe Day, which is celebrated each year on uh, the 9th of May. And so this year's Europe Day to hail the unity of the association's founding declaration for the roughly 400 million community is in a world-defined context. It's much more uh, a silent uh, celebration. We cannot organize any mass events, any meetings, any cultural events as we often do in countries where we serve. So we have it more silently. Maybe you can see some sequences on the social media. The intra-European policies to contain the spread of the coronavirus, which has killed more than 270,000 people worldwide, have been accompanied by a dose of international solidarity. More than three weeks ago, I think, this, that uh, the President of the Commission, Mrs. von der Leyen, announced that uh, 15.6 billion euros will be mobilized. The European Union has mobilized a multilateral effort funded with a 7 billion pledged euros package for a coronavirus vaccine. This will be put in place and I think it, it will be addressing both the, let's say, sanitary side of it, but also the economic and social economic side of it. A champion for liberties, the coronavirus has confined some of them today. And that ends this edition of the 730 News. But before